So with the grass court season underway and Wimbledon only two weeks away, we've got some massive, massive results from last week. And also, this is the last chance this week for a lot of players to get their ranking in the top 32 seeds so they can be seeded at Wimbledon. Let's go have a look at who won last week because there were some big results and some big changes to the rankings because of it. So we had four tournaments in total last week, two on the men's, two on the women's, all of them 250 events, starting in the Nottingham Open with Katie Boulder getting her first WTA trophy over Burridge, 6363, and she got a massive boost in the rankings. Over in the Netherlands at the Ross Marlin Open, we had Alexandrova winning a tight three-setter against Kudamatova, 466476 to lift another trophy and back-to-back -back trophies at the Ross Marlin open. On the men's side, we had a 250 event in Stuttgart with Tiafo getting a massive win there against Struff and his ranking a career high and we'll talk about that in a second. And then also at the Rosmarlin open for the men's side, the ATP 250 event there, Grigspor beat Thompson 6-7-7-6-6-3 and he's also got a massive boost in the rankings and could be seated at Wimbledon. We'll talk about that in a second. So there's a massive results there for some names that needed a boost in the ranks. Let's go have a look at the players outside the top 10 that have got a boost in the rankings this week and there he is, Grigspor, career high number 29 in the world which means he will be seated at Wimbledon if he has a decent week this week. Nine spots higher than last week. Andy Murray, he won a challenger event for the second week in a row. He's cl slowly climbing up the rankings as well. Six spots higher than last week to 38 in the world on the brink of being seated at Wimbledon, which means that he avoids guys like Alcaraz and Djokovic in the first round. And Bolter, she goes up 49 spots to a career high 77 in the world after winning her first WTA trophy. So, so the rankings this week are going to be crucial for some of those names and they need to have good results. Let's have a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings. Nick Kyrgios, he's gone down to number 31 in the world, six spots lower than last week, and he's on the brink of possibly not being seated at Wimbledon if next week goes bad. So he has a lot to play for in the next week. Matteo Berrettini, same boat. He's down 13 spots to 34 in the world after withdrawing this week and also not playing well last week. So he's dropped a lot of points and could be unseated at Wimbledon. And Simona Halep. She's gone down number 40 in the world, four spots lower than last week. We still don't know when she's going to play, so that doesn't really matter too much, but her ranking is starting to drop due to lack of plays. All right, let's go have a look at the WTA rankings for this week, and no changes to the top 10, just a couple of points changes. Triontek still at one with Sabalenka 900 points behind at number two. Rabakina at three, Garcia at four, Pagula at five, Jabur at number six, Goff at number seven, Zachary at eight, Kvitova at nine, and Hadaj Maya at number 10. But of course, this week is the biggest week for the rankings, and almost all of the top 10 except for Sviantec, Pagula, and Hadaj Maia are playing this week. So everyone's playing for a top eight spot. Of course, you don't want to play Sviantec or Sabalenka or Rebakina until later in the tournament at Wimbledon. So a lot of players are playing for those top eight spots in the rankings this week. Having with the race of the finals now, and again, no real changes with Sabalenka at number one, Sviantec at two, Rebakina at three, and Pagula at four. Mukova stays at number five with Goff at number six, Bencic at seven, Krajikova at eight. We do have a change down the bottom with Kudamatova going up two spots after making a final last week in the Netherlands pushing Adajmaia down to number 10 and Kvitova outside the top 10 completely. But with Wimbledon worth points this year, in about a month's time, this is going to look very, very different. And we might even start getting some players locked in to the WTA Finals for the end of the year. Going over to the men's rankings now. And again, no real big changes up the top with Djokovic at number one, Alcaraz at number two. But you can see there, 400 points between them. And Alcaraz is playing a 500 event this week, which means he's got 500 points. Potentially, if he wins at the Queens Club, he could be number one again. So this week is crucial for that number one battle. And of course, Djokovic is and playing. Medvedev also playing this week. He's at number three. That shouldn't change. Win, lose, or draw this week. We've got Root at four. Sidzipas at five. And those two guys are playing for a number four spot in the world. And of course, that means you don't play Djokovic, Alcaraz, or Medvedev until the semis. you got Runa at six, Rublev at seven, Fritz at eight, Sinner at nine. But we do have a change on the bottom. Francis Tiafo getting to the top ten for the first time in his career. Two spots higher than last week after winning Stuttgart, pushing Hashinov outside the top ten completely. So big foe into the top ten. It's the first time in 11 years that two Americans men have been in the top 10 together. I think the last time might have been Fish and Roddick. Let me know down in the comments below if I'm wrong or right. But uh, very historic moment there. Big foe getting into the top 10. Going to the race of the finals now and no changes this week with Djokovic still at number one and Medvedev at two. Elkris at three. Sidzipas at four. Runa at five. Sinner at six. Rublev at seven. Rude at eight. Fritz at nine and Hashnov at number 10. But a lot of those guys are playing this week and remember this week is worth 500 points for the two big tournaments in Hella and Queen's Club. So there's massive changes potentially to the race of the finals over the next week or so. So there you have it. They are the rankings this week. No massive changes, but next week is so crucial because, of course, on Monday, this time next week, it's going to be locked. Wimbledon's going to be locked. We're going to find out who's going to play where, uh, who's going to be seated, who's not going to be seated. Guys like Kyrgios, Berrettini, who are very good on grass, could be unseated danger players going into Wimbledon when we find out the draw next week. And there is obviously that top 10 battle as well, that top eight 
to top 10, you want to be in the top eight. You don't want to be in the top 10. You want to make sure you get up that, you know, as high as possible so you don't have to play guys like Djokovic and Elkris in the first uh, week or so. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to get into that top eight and who is going to be unseated and dangerous? Because Kyrgios had a really bad problem with the knee last week. Berrettini pulled out this week, so he's not even playing. So he might drop out of the rankings altogether and be unseated going into Wimbledon. And on the women's side, we've got the same thing. A couple of players there that are really on the verge of being seeded or being a dangerous unseated player. Of course, Andy Murray trying to get seeded as well at Wimbledon, which would be a fairy tale for him. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you this week in the rankings?